Hi, I'm Kylie Stratton from Special Needs Mums Rising. I'll be on the Prosperity Online show. Um, I support the mental and emotional well-being of mums of children with special needs and help them rise up above the diagnosis and embrace their new normal. So I'd love for you to come, come on and join us. Thank you. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the NLP and Creative Transmorphologist, uh, Kylie. Kylie, how are you doing, my love? Good, thank you. How are you? Fantastic. Thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us today. Now, Kylie leads a team that helps special needs moms called Special Needs Moms Rising. Now, they support the mental and emotional well-beings of children, of moms of children with special needs and, you know, help them rise above, first of all, the diagnostics and also embrace the new normal. Now, she's also authored a book that is called Seven Action Steps to Finding Kylie and she helps, um, you know, other people that are going through, um, you know, emotional distress right there. Now, I could go on and on about your accolades there, Kylie, but I think you're the right person to let us know a little bit about yourself and what it is that you actually help um, with, uh, for, especially for the special needs uh, moms out there. So, I, through my programs and workshops, uh, and my groups, I support the mental and emotional well-being of, of mums of children with special needs and I empower them and inspire them by sharing my own story and by sharing all the tools and techniques I have um, accumulated over 18 years on the personal development journey so they can rise above the diagnosis and embrace the new normal and and not live a life of um, having a child with special needs as a life sentence and to still be able to have some sort of life for themselves because I believe every single one of us or every single one of us is a human being and as a human being we all have needs so it's very important for us to meet our own needs as, as well as taking care of someone else and meeting their needs as well at the same time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for bringing that to light. Now, obviously, Kylie, you very passionate about this subject. Is there any particular, um, you know, attachment to this or is there something that would have gone on in your life that, um, you know, gave you the empowerment to actually be able to help other mothers that have um, kids with special needs? So, um, yeah, so it all started with myself as well, with my own um, special needs as well. So I was born into a family of domestic violence, drug and alcohol abuse, mental illness, um, dysfunctional, unhealthy relationships. And I couldn't talk to all seven and I couldn't read and write till I was 19, and I had a lot of learning disabilities. I was severely bullied at school, and my nana, so had my, her daughter, so my auntie, so my auntie, when she was three years old, caught the German measles, and they um, went to her brain and caused brain damage. So my auntie is now in her 50s, but she's still like, she's in a 50 year old body, but still has a brain of a three year old. So I watched as a little girl, I watched my Nana um, try and take care of my auntie. And I spent all, every weekend and every school holidays with my Nana. My na I watched my nana go in and out of the mental health ward. I watched my nana, you know, OD on, medic on tablets. I watched my nana self-harm in front of me at like 10 years old. Um, yeah, I watched my nana very depressed and I watched her mental illnesses and I watched her struggle. And then, um, yeah, when I was 27, um, I had my third born son. And when I received his diagnosis at 10 months old, when I when the doctors told me he'll 
He's got cerebral palsy. Your son's got cerebral palsy. He'll never walk. He'll never talk. He'll just be a vegetable, put him home and forget about him. In that moment, I made a decision and I made a commitment to myself and to my children that I was going to break the cycle and I was not going to be a depressed disability carer and that I was going to rise above it and I wasn't going to let it um, bring me down. Absolutely. And thank you so much for that really heartfelt story. Um, as you explained it, I, uh, yeah, I could see how much of an impact that has to the person you've become today. And thank you for rising up and actually going out of your way to not be selfless and actually go out and help other mothers that might be going through that emotional and mental strive out there. Now, Kylie, you, all of that must have taken you on a journey. And in the process, you went out and found yourself in the form of a book that you wrote, um, you know, that is a brave story of a very young girl that was born, um, like you've mentioned, in a world of poverty, abuse and neglect, and also, you know, mental and emotional uh, illness, let alone alcoholism that was just going on around, um, you know, your, um, you know, your, your, your area there. And, uh, there's, there's a part in the book where, um, you know, the, 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 the journey goes on and then you, they reach to that final straw that actually broke the camel's back. Can you just walk us through that part of the book, um, at, at which, you know, you had said, that's it, that's enough. What was actually going on in your head and what, what, what were you stepping then on to do um, when you say that was enough? Um, there was a couple of times that I had that moment, that aha moment and that moment of I had enough and I did just share one of them. Um, but another time was my transition from life coaching to, um, to creatrix transmologist was... I had a I had a child that a baby that was crying 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and he was crying nonstop. And as he got older, that turned into screaming nonstop. And this was you could not imagine it. This was the most stressful thing on our family, and almost tore my family apart. Um. So yeah. So for like. Four years straight, it was just non-stop screaming, non-stop crying. I had read over a thousand personal development books. I had seven years of counseling. I had five years of life coaching. I became a life coach. I became an NLP practitioner. I spent $100,000 in courses and, and workshops and seminars. I had done so much of it. And I didn't just read those books. I implemented every single thing I read. And I learned it all and I implemented it into my everyday life, no matter how much of a struggle that was. I'd wake up four o'clock in the morning before the kids would wake up and I'd do my morning routine and I implemented everything I learned. But I was just like, what is missing? I'm not getting the outcomes that I want to get for myself and for my life coaching clients. And I was like, there's something missing. I am missing something here. I've done 12 years of studying how the brain works and, and you know, personal development and how to tap into your full potential. I've done so much of it and I was like, what is missing? And then that's where I found Creatrix, which is a, um, which is, you know, it's a process for, that's designed by a female for the female brain. And that unlocked my potential and that, um, yeah, and it got rid of everything that was holding me back. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for that. Now, I would think that the reason why most of these things were not working um, for you is because if you really look at my hands there, Kylie, no hands are, oh, no fingers are of the same height. So there's definitely not a cookie cutter way of uh, dealing with, you know, with people, especially those that do have special needs and need to be taken care of in a totally different way. Now you are transforming mothers' lives into balanced, calm and um, happy lives. Can you just walk us through 
how you were enabling that um, since you had not been able to achieve that up until um, a certain point where you got the modality you just mentioned there. So how do I do that? Was Sorry, what? Well, yep. Yes. Um, yes. So how do I do that with my clients? Yes. Yeah. So I, um, so I, I present um, empowering workshops where we go through the, and I educate them on, like, I teach them some calming techniques that they can use on themselves and their children. And then um, I educate them on the difference between the, Ma the male brain and the female brain and more or less how we've been for, for so many centuries we've been putting I don't have two different phones with me but we've been putting the soft the wrong software into the hardware so we've been putting like mate what what is male software for the male hardware we've been putting mouse software I know this doesn't sound too good but the mouse self software um, into the female hardware just like a um, you know two different computers two absolutely. different phones absolutely. and yeah okay absolutely. so I, I go through that I go I teach them the um, hormones uh, and um, the female cycle and how to how we can um, capitalize on that and use that to our advantage um, and support ourselves with that. Uh, like how we have four seasons in one month. So understanding that and what we should be doing in certain months. Um, and that our consistency is totally different to a male's consistency where a male might just work 60 hours a week, every single week where a female should be working certain hours, of each week like say like one season like in one week they should be working like 80 hours like like because they're high energy and everything and then the next week working 60 hours and maybe next week 40 and then the next week oh it's you know that week they should be just minimizing their work and just taking care of themselves that week um so yeah capitalizing on the female cycle and then going through epigenetics and um yeah and the generational you know generation how to break generational cycles and all of that and then yeah i i have a lot of from the workshop they come and have a trans like a transformation with me where we go through their um where we go through everything that's holding them back absolutely absolutely and uh, maybe just to pick it up from when you're talking about software and the hardware. It's just like an iPhone uh, would not function without the apps that we put onto it. So if you put in the wrong apps that are not designed for the iPhone, but are designed for Samsung or something like that, it's not going to work, all right? And yeah, also with um, like, we're being, we've been conditioned and we've been trained to go to ship school where all the males go. So we go to ship school to learn how to um, drive a male, like a ship, the male way, but yet we need our own ship school. Right, right. For females, like to understand how to drive our own vehicle. Absolutely, absolutely. Because um, if you would um, indulge me there a little bit, the, the female within our society basically has to endure a whole lot, especially maybe the pain of childbirth. A male would never know what that is like, you know what I mean? So I would, I would suppose just taking it from that own, um, you know, uh, example, there is quite a lot that we might take for granted, but do not understand, you know, how the, the women actually do feel out there. And, um, you know, it, further going on to how you work with your clients, um, I think, and I suppose you work, you have been, um, you know, in a plane and then they do instruct that the mother, um, you know, you know, strap their own mask first before they help their child. Um, how important is, um, you know, looking after yourself as a mother um, is towards the well-being of, especially the kids um, that are, you know, with special needs? That is an amazing question <laughs> and it is very, it's, it's crucial. It's very important. It's everything and it's not being selfish either. It's being selfless because the more, like if you, the more you fill up the cup, 
your cup, the more you keep it full, the more you have to give others. You can't give from an empty cup. You have nothing left to give. And by giving from an empty cup, you're doing damage to your children. And, like, it's the whole thing. Happy mums, it's happy wife equals happy, uh, happy wife, happy life. Happy mums equals happy kids. It's like... It, it does revolve around the mum of the house. It really does. If the mum's happy, everyone else is happy. The husband's happy. The kids are happy. So if the mum's calm, everyone else is a lot calmer. So it's really, really, yeah, it's really, really crucial to fill that cup up and to put your oxygen mask on first because how are you going to give? How are you going to be the best mother you can possibly be if you're not taking care of yourself like i i set myself up every morning i you know look after myself i set myself up so then when my kids wake up i'm happy i haven't like rolled out of bed and i'm all grumpy and don't talk to me like i've been up for hours and i'm all chirpy and i'm all happy and i'm ready to play and i'm ready to be in the present moment with them and i'm ready to um emotionally support them and i do believe so many like i know like the older generation and my generation a lot of us what a lot of us adults have missed out on as children is our parents might have been there for us our mum might have been there with us all the time but because a lot of them were at home back in those days just feel old <laughs> um but my biggest thing and a lot of my friends biggest thing is lack of emotional support like their mum gave them everything except emotional support because they didn't know how to emotionally support the child especially when the um when the you know when they have a daughter and she becomes a teenager and they just don't know how to handle that and how to support them um, because a lot of parents, they take on the kids' behaviour, like they take it on and they make it personal and start yelling at the kids and getting stressed out when what the kids are going through has nothing to do with us as a parent. We've just got to hold the space and be there for them and support them through their emotions. Like the world is tough enough out there. School is tough enough. At ho home needs to be their safe place where they can just be themselves and their parents understand them and their parents can just yeah hold that space to emotionally support them and by putting your mask on first you are emotionally available for your children absolutely and i really like the morning routine that you've just um you know told us there because i yeah, we, we've got a three-year-old here and I can imagine when you wake up, she's already chirpy and you're thinking, oh, where does she get this energy? But you also really need to have woken up a long time ago so that you support that and you're not dampening the mood and not carrying on, um, you know, the, the, the vicious cycle of, of not being there emotionally for them. So thank you exactly for, personally for that uh, little part right there. Now, um, there's a scenario of when... Um, you've got so many demands, especially from the 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 kids with um, you know uh, special needs, right there, uh, Kylie. And you now have a scenario where you have to let go of your dreams, just so that you are there emotionally for um, you know those kids. And especially, this show is designed for entrepreneurs so that they can either start, scale, and grow a business so that it ends up profitable and enjoyable. And I can imagine if somebody is going through a, a process where they have a loved one or um you know a, a, a kid or a sibling that needs their attention 24 7 that means they might um forego their dreams but you are actually helping um you know women and mothers who are in that scenario not to lose sight of their dreams while they're actually fulfilling their roles and commitments in the lives of their households how then are you I'm making this possible given everybody has 24 hours and if your kids are going to be needing you 24 of those hours is there going to be time for you to have you know a, a dream or a goal that you can follow through 
Um, yes, for me, I, from my personal experience, I, I just believe that we have dreams for a reason. I don't believe we just have dreams for no reason to do nothing for them, with them. Our dreams are our, you know, our GPS, our guidance system to guide us to our sole purpose. So I, I'm big on dreams and I believe, you know, every, I, I support everyone and believe everyone should have dreams and go after them because we have them for a reason and they are for us to, you know, to go and create them and achieve them. So how this is possible is, um, I help my clients achieve their dreams with, with um, get like getting rid of everything that's holding them back and all their emotions and limiting beliefs. Time might be still an issue, and I I know it is for me as well. Um, but it's about prioritizing and using time well. Like what I get done between four o'clock in the morning and seven or eight o'clock. What I get done in that morning. I think I do way more than what most people do in one day. It's um, because there's nothing, because you're not, you're not dragging like a, cha a ball and chain with you. When you're emotionally cleaned out and, you know, and don't have those limiting beliefs and all you've got left in your core, like in your core, to, in your soul is, um, is like wholeness and completeness, peace, and in the present moment and free and light and calm, when you've only got that, you have so much more energy and you're not dragging, you know, your, all of your emotional baggage with you. So it makes it a lot lighter. And you can also, like, think clearer and be able to problem solve a lot more, a lot easier. So it's like, okay, if I want to go and achieve my dreams or say... I want to go and publish a book. I want to go and write my first book. Some of the clients might say that's their dream, like mine was. And even if they just get up, go to bed earlier, like go to bed as soon as they put the kids to bed. So go to bed a little bit earlier, wake up earlier before the kids wake up. And even if you just do one page a day, write one page a day or write for 10 minutes a day, if you do it every single day, and never ever give up, it will finally, you know, it will finally come true. It will finally be something. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's about releasing those breaks and about dumping everything, you know, all the clutter that is holding you back and um, becoming very resourceful. So if you do need time away from the caring role, um, support is a massive key. Support, uh, building that support network and a, and getting a team behind you. Absolutely. Well, now, Kylie, I mean, obviously our audience is probably sitting right at the edge of the seat right now saying, I want what she's got or what I want what she's on. What's the best way that people can get a hold of you there, Kylie? So they can contact me through www.kyliestretton.com or Special Needs Mums Rising on Instagram and Facebook. I do have a, a group, a Special Needs Rising, a Special Needs Mums Rising group on Facebook where I nurture and support and encourage and inspire and empower all of my members. Absolutely. I'm so excited you decided to, um, you know, join us today on this show there, Kylie. And I'm really, really excited about your energy. And I'm dying to hear what your morning routine is, um, you know, is all about. Because the energy that you're bringing in today is just, um, you know, contagious. Now, before we go into that uh, part, I just got one last question, um, you know, for you, Kylie, you know. We might have people, you see like right now is the end of the year 
and a lot of people have probably been dragging you know themselves through from bed the whole day and they just really have lost their wherewithal and their you know the need for survival just because so much is just happening in and around their lives whether it's the family whether it's the hat they have to wear as a mom with um you know kids with special needs and stuff like that do you have any couple of words that you can leave us with um you know for people to enter you know 2018 in in a vigorous and you know energetic way in order for them to actually not lose sight of their dream while they're fulfilling their roles and commitments in the lives of their household. That you are remember that you are doing an amazing job and pat yourself on the back every day and just um yeah praise yourself because no one else is going to just praise yourself for every single little thing you do and yeah just know that you're magnificent and that you know, every, everything is happening for you, not to you. And yeah, everything happens for a reason and it will all work out. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, Kylie, I can't thank you enough. And if you're watching this show right now, you would um, realize that this is the time you really want to subscribe. There's going to be a subscribe button here or here on the show. Just um, when it pops up, subscribe to this channel because we'll be bringing in experts like Kylie that are also helping um, you know, other people out there, especially with her group, Special Needs Mom Rising, that supports the mental and emotional well-being of moms and also uh, moms of children uh, with special needs and um, you know, helping them rise above the diagnosis and also embrace the new normal, all right? And like she says, everything is um, you know, not happening to you, but it's actually happening for you. So it's just a matter of you um, accepting that new normal and knowing that you're not alone in this um, whole thing. Now, Kylie, I can't thank you enough for your love, the level of expertise and your time on this show today. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. Thank you.